Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Rush GG presents Sunday Rush number nine, grand finals time. Best of five. Kirk Dupes next to me. Josh Zoinks Heber. We've got TTV, the perennial favorites, the, the boogeyman that's been haunting every Unite team's dreams uh, <laughs> since this game has been released. And uh, I don't want to say new to the scene, but certainly newer to Unite Mics is Pog yeah. Champs. Uh, we recently watched them play. In the uh, Delsey Trainer Challenge uh, Day One Group Stage, um, and they were able to qualify for the Big 16 Team Double Elimination uh, Tournament with one of the larger prize pools we've seen in Pokemon Unite so far, uh, 1,500 euro, and a bunch of uh, really expensive luggage from the company Delsey in Paris. So, uh, Josh, I don't know how familiar you are with Pog Champs, uh, but we've kind of got the loadout of the characters here. You tell me what you see and talk me through what you uh, what you expect from Pog Champs to kind of do against the more we'll say the more known commodity of ttv <laughs> yeah team ttv is going to be giving us exactly what we've expected from uh the rest of the times we've seen them i'm excited to see pog champs i may not recognize i've seen this team play together as a cohesive unit before but i'm definitely recognizing a lot of these names from ladder so there is some uh firepower on this pog champs team i'm excited to see it played out here uh, for those of you who are actually looking at the screen, though, I'm really interested to talk about this team composition a little bit. We have TTV uh, sticking to their pretty similar rounds. Uh, Zugrug's been on that Wigglytuff quite a bit as of late, but we actually have Toon picking up the Gardevoir in Jungle. Um, a pretty a nice flex that Gardevoir doing a ton of damage into large area effect positions, which uh, can be a frightening case for a lot of teams who want to clump up and push forward. Now, the team pog champs is going to be running a very close combat centered composition uh we're looking at wiggly lucario serena slowbro and venusaur venusaur giving you the most amount of range that the composition gives you however we're probably going to see a pedal dance giga drain venusaur this is going to be a very very brawly composition push their way in cc to keep you in their clutches as long as possible and deal out that close range damage uh, it's really going to be a battle of two schools of thought in this upcoming fight. Yeah, uh, with the Venusaur and Gardevoir combination, obviously Pogchamp is going to have to react uh, very efficiently to that, as you mentioned, mm -hmm. because of the close uh, quarters of their squad makeup right now. Let's talk about that Slowbro real quick, because it stuck out to me, and I'm sure it stuck out to you, Zoinks. Um, Slowbro, it, 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 it's looking good when you can stuff down those Unite moves uh, with some with some key maneuvering by a very uh, seasoned Slowbro player. I'm not too familiar with Crackies here, uh, but what's something they can do in this matchup before we jump in to, to help turn the tides here against TTV. Cracky's number one job is going to be that of a man-to-man -man defense. As soon as any important team fight comes up, Cracky's head is going to be on a swivel trying to find Team TTV's Lucario. They're going to be on a head on a swivel to find Lutano. As soon as Cracky's finds Lutano, is going to be using every ability that Slowbro has in its arsenal to make sure that Lucario cannot move and not be a presence in that fight. It's going to give them a better opportunity of boss secure, and it's going to give them a much better probability to win these big, impactful team fights. Yeah, we see the teams uh, loading up now, and we're getting ready to jump to the action. Any final thoughts before this timer kicks off and the action is, in fact, upon us? I'd say if I'm Podchamp, I, I, the biggest thing I need to worry about might be the goof early game. Uh, that Pikachu is going to be dealing a lot of early damage at range and keeping them at bay, where that is not at all where Podchamp's team wants to be playing. Uh, right now, goof is going to be the early game demon from TTV. Yeah, we're following the point of view of Zugrug here. Going to be playing that Jigglypuff, future Wigglytuff. And uh, that sing ability is really going to be the impetus for a TTV to take on some action here. Uh, so a, a very solid player to follow. It's definitely going to be part of the mix uh, as this game proceeds forward. 1-1-3 one, one, laning, uh, nothing new there. Uh, as of recent days, seems to be the meta call. Uh, so no changes and no surprises just yet. Yeah, no, not at all. Indy Bear nabbing that middle Audino, so making sure that TT, uh, TTV gets that barely, uh, but ever so yet important uh, advantage in the early game experience right now. Wow, wait, Zugra Guardian locking Sing and using that ability to push in and apply some 
early CC pressure. Yeah, they're going to see if they can close it down here on Dark Hero. Dark Hero needs to use the eject button to get out. Indie Bear and Goof being relentless, chasing down Zugrug, staying on their mobs here to get their levels up. And that's kind of been the order of the day here for TTV. Let Zugrug get to four because the Sing can really lock things down early. And Goof and Indie pressure the other side of the map and see what they can steal out from under the nose of Pog Champs. And those bees were not there for a while, aren't they? <laughs> no, and a lot of you, me included, might be wondering why on earth we aren't seeing Zug on some of those more iconic heroes, that, that Snorlax and the Pokemon like that, as we see <laughs> right here, this early pressure is why. <laughs> that, dude, that thing was clutch, and Goof closed it out on the Bulbasaur there. Make that a KO streak of two as they pick up the Slowpoke here, and Pogchamps is just under-leveled here in this bottom lane, and uh, you know we're not seeing a lot of action yet, and the, the junglers haven't come into play quite yet here, but that is some good work in the bottom lane, picking up two KOs, and Goof, you mentioned it, Pikachu doing work here, and Zugrug just leveling up as he's watching his team you can handle it here comes serena the jungler gonna try and do some damage on zugrug as they catch a sing and they attack goof gg indy's re retreating and indy might not be long for this world if they isolate them out mm -hmm. and here we go here's the danger of pog champs jungler getting a double kill solar yoshi on that new uh that new introduction of serena this pokemon uh if it is over leveled in the jungle is a gigantic threat early game if pikachu was a scare to them early uh then the serena is the answer because right there, coming down to get that double KO is a really strong presence and maybe what Paul Champs needed to get back into this game. Great job there uh, by Cracky's the slow bro to keep TTV at arm's length there, making sure Zagro can't get too penetrate too far with the sleep. But as I say that, there's that telekinesis to pick up and keep everybody from going down there to that sleep. And Zagro is forced out immediately. I'm watching the timers here, and I don't think anybody KOs went down on the other side as we're watching Zagro get right back into the action and steal up those bees. Yoshi doing work on Zagro. They've seemed to isolate them out and tiger them down, but <laughs> they're able to close it out. And now it's four in the bottom lane, four on two, and Yoshi oh. goes down there as well to Wigglytuff and the Lucario top lane worth noting also went down. A little bit of oversaying welcome on either front there. Zugrug pushing in even though the focus band and the uh, and eject button were both off on cooldown uh, was punished, but then immediately the return punish from Goof and Indy uh, just really shutting down the aggression out of Pogchamps, making everybody have a reset, and then the Dreadnought has already begun at 6 minutes and 35 seconds. Yeah, half HP down. Dark Hira with the Wigglytuff coming in, taking a quick look to see what's going on. Oh, but there's <laughs> there was your jungler tune to come in and really deal that massive damage and allow that thing to be closed out. Now they're just picking them all off. Cracky's getting isolated. Zugrug targeting down Karake coming in. And now all the points are raining into the bottom lane as you saw those gifts shatter everywhere as Pikachu gets their points in. And now Indie Bear doing it the hard way, trying to get them in, but Karake <laughs> bubbles them out. Yeah, yeah, really impressive patience of score. And Lutano being the best scoring goalie on an enemy goal zone. Uh, really impressive there, Indy Bear. Uh, able to score only because of the power up punch of a Lucario. Uh, you're not an application you see every day, but Lutano always there. Well, not if you ask his teammates, but is trying to do his best to always be there and really make sure that those essential scores go in. Bottom goal zone still up, but cannot take too many scores to break it. Uh, at this point, right now, TCV is looking to see how many points they can overdump on that goal zone. But Pogchamps is trying to do the exact same thing on the opposing one. Yoshi getting uh, getting picked off a little bit. Uh, you having to use a Unite move to get that Buddy Bear going up in Zugrug not long, but here comes the team. They're able to pick up Zugrug here as Yoshi comes in with that triple axle and the, the grassy glide. And finally, they get taken out by Goof, but uh, did a considerable amount of, amount of damage before they went down. And now everybody's kind of meeting in the middle as uh, the Lucario's there getting picked off by Toon. And we're watching things develop. Karaki coming in, but they've been isolated. Cool. There goes Toon with a KO streak of two. And Toon is getting just nasty with this Gardevoir already. Already 11, and they're bullying crackies. Here comes Lutano to pick them up, and holy smokes, kid. They go down, and that is three KOs on the side of Pog Champs. And you have to think that things are starting to slip in between their fingers just a little bit here with four minutes and 47 seconds left in the game. Oh, no, 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 no. It's sliding. It's sliding right between their fingertips, <laughs> Zoinks. And that's a Unite move that's going to pick up the whole squad from the Wigglytuff as they're bullying in the bottom turret, and they just keep fighting and fighting and fighting, and there's oh, nobody on TTV going down. 
<laughs> no, right now, I'm actually thinking that PogChamps underestimated the amount of CC on the side of TTV. That Gardevoir being able to hit incredible stuns as well as Pikachu oh. sets up and tees up the damage that just demolishes There's all the PogChamps. They can't respawn fast enough to get back into this game. They've had three pips, KO pips on the screen for the last 45 seconds, Josh, and this Dreadnought is already at a one-third percent. What's Cracky's going to do? They're on a four-on-one right now. I mean, I appreciate the effort, kid, but holy smokes, regroup with the squad, figure out what's going on, because you got three, eight, three minutes, 56 seconds on the clock to change the tides of this one. Woof. Uh, Crash News would have to be his own patch notes if they wanted to try to make Slowbro a, into a Dreadnought stealing machine. So, not going to pull that off. We only got a, about a minute and a half up until this Zapdos fight. So, right now, there's a lot of farm on the on the side of both of these teams. It's just going to be a lot of warm-up and prepping those Unite moves for the team fight. Right now, there was that gigantic team fight in bot lane. Almost no one should have Unite moves at their arsenal, but the first team to actually earn those back might want to push that early advantage or they would regret using them this early. Zugrug using a sleep and just passing right by Crackies, but everything in the middle has seemed to be kicking off here. A lot of a lot of team uh, team icons in the middle as the Lucarios are kind of chasing back and forth, and they do take a KO on Goof, the jungler, a Yoshi, and the Lucario there, uh, Sereyu. They're pushing in, but Zugu put trying to put them to sleep and buy a little time for Lutano to come in and just be a closer. Crackies with a good <laughs> telekinesis going to keep them up and alive. Yoshi and uh, Sereyu able to kind of get out a little bit if they want to, but Yoshi dives right back in, and that's another four-on-one you can't think that's going to pay off too quickly. Indie Bear with the chip shot taking them down. And they're taking a look. Rotom's almost going, uh, almost uh, biting the dust here with 2 minutes 39. Yeah, yeah, not, I mean, uh, the sacrifice out of Yoshi was there to get, secure the Rotom for Team Pogchamps. They definitely valued that quite a bit. I really wonder if it's going to pay off, though, because right now they're going to try to push this bot lane when they know the rest of the team has to go and stop that Rotom. They do not want an undefensible go goal zone in that double-scoring two-minutes end period. That is a nasty CC combination there with Zugrug yeah. and Toon rolling together to try to clean up that bottom lane. They had to feel good about their presence there. Nine seconds until Dread now there's not going to be enough time for that i'm thinking we're flipping right to zapdos and uh yeah. ttv we know they like to play that conservative uh, bubbled up defense but here comes sarayu to kick off the action early as you said Everybody on TTV does have their Unite moves, though, and uh, that bullying didn't really posture too hard. As I love the TTV idea, though. The execution is so important to find those individual units and take them out. But Serena using that Unite move for only half damage on Zugrug, <laughs> this is looking pretty dire. Unite move right back by Zugrug here, um, and that's going to put Serena on the edge. Goof able to close it out, and Zugrug is running straight to the goal zone. Let's watch how the middle goes as Serena's gone down. Back cap by uh, uh, Karake there, going to go in the top screen. Here comes Dark here to try and break that up they're unable to 92 points right in the ducats zagra gets away and checks bees as we're watching one minute 22 on the clock yeah right now the the points got basically an even trade maybe 20 points lost on terms of ttv side going in the favor of pog chance uh they're all waiting for that one minute score line to sell them how much of a lead they have and what they need to do Right now, the top goal one, uh, tier one goal zone is still available, and Lutano has uh, seen that with the green with NVI eyes. It's going for a back cap of his own. Yeah, that's going to be easy ducats there. With uh, they're, they're already in the lead, and that Hundo Burger going to help out just a little bit. Zagreg and Darkira doing the Sing Dazzling Gleam combination right in each other's faces here. As that score shield is too strong and the levels are too high for Zagreg, as they're able to dunk right in Darkira's face face um and the final unite move from pikachu i just saw get ticked away so they're using that for value in the middle let's see if they can pick off any ko zagrog on the verge of going down but they've been leashing dark here all over the bottom of this map not letting him join the team fight that might be a value here as lutano takes a ko on karake there goes Crake uh crackies and now dark here is trying to score but we're watching oh. toon pull up with indy off the leaf tornado and they're not going to be long for this world either if they're trying to stay in the pocket they choose to and they're gone the, <laughs> on the back Great of Goof awareness GG. from ttv to collapse right there Guevara almost uh or Dakira actually oh getting maybe a chance but uh the absolute delete from all of those abilities team TTV <laughs> really bring down the thunder and we see a surrender before we even see the score line uh really dominant showing in the last two minutes that was a great showing by TTV, and I think that domination started a little bit earlier now you mentioned the the CC um let's get the final score real quick 434 to 200 uh the scoreboard didn't look as bad. Not a lot of ducats scored on the on the Zapdos, of course. So 
you mentioned that maybe pog champs underestimated the amount of cc that was going to be coming at them from mm -hmm. the composition of um ttv what can they do to square that up is it a personnel change is it a, a, a formation change is it a laning change I, I honestly i think it's going to be a bit of a stylistic change we saw the jungler uh yoshi there trying to push a lot for these individual one-on-one -on -one fights that immediately turned into not one-on-one -on -one fights because they found themselves stuck in the thick of it while the rest of ttv converged on whoever um, dared show their face in lane um with the amount of cc that Every single character on TTV gets, maybe not Indie Bear, Lutano gets it minorly, but the rest of the three of that team are going to punish, punish, punish any overstep they get. What I would like to see is if we see more of these ganks, more of these individual pushes, because Serena has the damage and self-healing to back it up, I'd love to see them doing this not uh, not solo. I'd love to see some accompaniment, uh, but for that, we're going to need to see a little bit better presence in the early game so they have the levels to justifiably do so from their laners. What do you think the consideration of maybe strapping up like your uh, Karake Serena with things like full heal uh, and maybe even changing maybe one of the bot lane partners to Ascendere, something with a little bit more range uh, but heavier damage output to kind of support that Serena in their quest when they dive in? Well, I think the Serena was already opting into the full heal, and it's just not quite enough. Like I said, we have maybe four characters that all have CC spells and abilities that are really shutting down this team. Uh, but may yeah, maybe I can see the Cinder Ace. I'd love to see the Cinder uh, in that jungle area, mm -hmm. um, just because that range is super helpful. Getting a lot more surprise ganks when you're coming down. It's pretty easy to see that giant onion lady running towards you out of the jungle, uh, but a giant fireball somehow a little harder to spot. Well, TTV is up 1-0 against Pog Champs here in the grand finals of uh, the Rush GG presents the Sunday Rush number nine. So we're going to take a quick pause for the cause, and we'll be right back with game two action. Serena's an onion, right? We're back for game two. Kirk Dupes next to Bay, Josh Zoinks Hebert grand finals. Rush GG presents Sunday Rush number nine. TTV up 1 0 against Pog Champs. Pog Champs pulling back to the drawing board, finding some potential solutions to the problems that arose in game one. Josh, talk to me about them. All right. So if we're looking at the team composition here from Pog Champs, we've got a few changes. We got uh, Darkira still on that Wheelie Tough and Karake still in that Venusaur uh, and Sireyu still in the Cario. But the Greninja and Eldegoss change for two of their players. I really like this change. We're going to have Solary in the jungle as Greninja. I really, really like Greninja in this meta at the moment. I know it's sort of seen less and less play, but if Toon is on that Gardevoir, that is going to be a uh, really long-range character and quite a bit of a threat. But if you can close that gap quickly on a high spiking damage Greninja... Uh, I think that's going to be a real threat to Toon. If we get to see some jungle 1v1s, I'm really wondering which way that scale is going to tip. At least I think they're going to have a bit more of a fighting chance than Serena, um, especially in a more 1v1 situations, which is what Yoshi really likes to push. So I think this is honestly is going to be leaning a little bit more into the style that they, uh, that they want to execute with. Yeah, I'm happy to see them choosing uh, another... Uh, heavy damage ranged attacker as well as strapping that thing up with a full heal as we discussed a little bit uh, <laughs> before at the tail end of game one there um ttv sticking to the same strategy don't change mm -hmm. what uh don't change if it was if it ain't broke don't fix it right that's um, the phrase so they're coming with the same five and uh, it really was the onus was on pog champs to make a change and make the adjustments here as we drop down to the action i'll be shocked if we see anything different than the one one three ttv has shown us time in and time out <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Where when the meta has not quite shifted back into the two one two anytime soon. Just uh, at the moment, if you're running anything else, you're just gonna gotta get swept in one lane, and it all goes downhill from there. Um, I, I honestly, I'm really excited to see that they made changes in this game too. I think PogChamp's making that switch at this point is really good. Uh, in case this game doesn't go their way, they have another chance to try to keep ironing things out. If they tried to force that composition one more time, they might be in a really compromising situation come elimination game three. 
Zug able to get that opposing Audino there right in the face of the other team. And they're getting back and they're going to hit that level four very early again. As we mentioned, they're going to be unlocking Sing. Here comes all of Pogchamp's pushing together, which is a good thing. A TT or Zugrug not quite on Sing yet. They're able to isolate and attack Crackies. Crackies is in the verge of going down and Wigglytuff bails. And finally, Goof closes the door on that Gossifleur. Another early KO and another landslide of experience back into the hands of TTV. As Indie Bear staying in the pocket for a really long time, Dark is putting the pressure, but there's Zugrug to cut them off and absorb that that gives them sing and the ko and two players have been gone down in this bottom lane and i think pog champ is just playing a bit too loose here in this bottom lane against this team <laughs> well they're doing everything they possibly can to try to contest these last hits but they all seem to be going in the favor of ttv now uh this wiggly that zugberg is running the only reason they're on this character is that level four power spike Running a Snorlax or something like that without that is going to be a huge problem in these early, early little skirmishes that these Pokemon are getting into. And right now, everything is going in favor of the blue side, TTTV pushing and getting yet another KO on a still Glossiferd Mon. Yeah, that was that was that was a team call for sure. Zugrug went in on the sleep. Indie Bear lined up to leave Tornado, and Goof just came in and shattered that door closed. I mean, slammed it so hard it darn near burst back open. And finally, they do get. Zugrug down for that overpressure here, but I mean, they're almost level six, and you can see levels across the board. That's still Gossifleur character pip on the screen. Yeah, that seems to really be the only thing holding them back. Normally, I would love to see after a KO like that, take it to the house, run it up. This is your one chance at an advantage of pulling back this early disparity that you've lost right now, try to push it up. But okay, there we go. A nice jungler fight in the mid is going to go in the favor of Pogchamp. A bit of a trade, though. Solari goes down, Yoshi goes down, and yet another kill. Karake down to the Lucario. Uh, definitely had to pull the entire team up in the mid, so a little bit of a distraction. Pog Champs uses it to score a little bit on that top goal zone. Yeah, Krakies didn't really take advantage of that distraction, though. Still sitting at Gossifleur, still back, as Dark Hero right next to them is level 6. Here comes Yoshi, going to put some pressure on as the jungler, as uh, Toon and uh, Lutano are hanging out up top against the lone Lucario Sereyu. Here we go, Goof GG pressuring back in. There goes Yoshi, as Dark Hero next on the chopping block. They go in, that's a sing both ways. Goof backs off and is able to stave off the sing and focus on Dark Hero. Zagro going to come in and help close. And there's Indy that ends up sealing it up. Cracky's getting pressured. Finally, level five. Finally, a Gossifler. Big jump there as the Sing comes in on Karake and Cracky's. Uh, but Zagra going to peel out and back off as Goof tries to come for the help. And there's Lutano with the big hammer coming in, picking up the squad, though, as they're able to eat up Cracky's and Dreadnoughts at a third HP, Josh. <laughs> Oh, man, Dreadnought got deleted, barely even showed up to the party, but at 6.30, the Mon is out of the game, and now uh, the push to that bottom goal zone is going to go completely away. They're actually going to opt into taking it out and breaking it right here. If Nope, nope, I'm sorry. <laughs> Before I even finish, uh, Pogchamps comes in last minute to make sure it's protected. Yeah, Pogchamps does get the, the Rotom sent down, and uh, it, it keeps it there as uh, Sereyu is still working in that top lane, but they're identifying Crackies again down here in the bot, and Zagreb putting the pressure on Dazzling Gleam. Finally, Dark Hero coming in with a little sing of their own, a little song of their own step here as Crackies and uh, uh, Karake are pushing based on that. Goof uses the Unite move. Zagreb decides to use that Buddy Berry to get out of the way, and that was more of maybe a protection Unite move than anything else, as now the, the jungler and the Lucario are here and they're working in this bottom goal zone. That's a unite move by Zugrug to pick up the squad as KO number one goes down. That's Dark here that bites the dust for Pog Champs and Zugrug putting the pressure on on Sereyu and they're able to dodge the the unite move from the Lucario there and Lucario with E speed able to take out Goof. But there goes down Toon as well. And now we're finally seeing the numbers starting to slide a little bit in this bottom lane. Is Pog Champ going to be able to take advantage as they are moving straight away, straight back up top into the middle? And Zugrug elects not to chase. Are they going to leave this? Uh, bottom goal zone open and they're going to go 40 please I was going to say no way <laughs> no. they get that one in yeah, Darkira definitely coming in last minute to save the day on that bottom goal zone. But wow, I see, like I've seen this situation right here before. Uh, <laughs> but this time, Goof not going to be able to save him uh, as he tries to run South Beach all the way out. Um, actually, really amazing capitalization on an opportunity from Pogchamps there. Uh, TTV uses three Unite moves, the Wiggly, Guard, and Pikachu Unite moves there, uh, which allows the Unite moves of Pogchamps to come in secondary and get a lot more value and then those e-speed resets for Seiyu was a really immaculate making sure he didn't miss any and was able to take up two KOs try to close this AEXP gap just ever so slightly 
a quick uh, team fight breaking out here in the bottom lane right before Dreadnought. Uh, Sarayu darts in, darts out with that bone rush there. And uh, Zugrog and Goof seem to really be eyeing down Yoshi. They were kind of on the chase there when they showed up and almost were... were following them back to the goal zone, decided to stay off a little bit here, and we're going to see where this kicks off. Sagro comes in with a sing, and there you go, right on Yoshi as Lutano eyeing them up. They're trying to. Eldegoss uses their Unite move to get some Buddy Berry and smacks down on Lutano. Zagrog's on the peel, and Karake for Pogchamps has already started Dreadnought. Yoshi comes in to keep working on Dreadnought. Zagrog's HP is going down really quick as those two players on Pogchamps getting melted down by Lutano, and two by two, and holy smokes, you thought there was a team fight there breaking out, but those types changed very quickly <laughs> yeah yeah right there is where tune uh gets the just absolute golden gleam in his eyes as he sees them all clumped up in one position able to use future sight or psy shock right there and just bam that huge amount of splash damage is going to open up the gates for dreadnought and uh and lutano to get a whole 50 and an already very weakened goal zone a lot of points presence right now ttv currently leads in the exp war as well as the scoring one yeah that was a 40 point over dunk there if my uh, memory serves correctly zagrug able to pick up lutano get 21 points in there too karake not able to stop and break both score shields now zagrug gonna uh, i thought they're gonna pop up top but they're not too concerned they're going back down. Toon's there to close it out, right? They're dealing heavy damage. Zagra's just trying to take a nap in their jammies here in the bottom lane. Karaki going to try and score. Here comes Saray with a little bit of pressure. Lutano scouted it out, though. Dark here on the back end. We got a three on two. Fortunately, TTV's sitting in the goal zone. They're going to get a little bit of HP, a little bit of barrier back because of that. But that bought enough time to get bees. But the pressuring Dark here. Dark here goes down to Zagrug. And now they're eyeing out who's next. Is it Karaki? It is. See you later. Son, Sarayu's getting chased. Lutano diving in. And here comes Toon. You know they can close the door on him. They've done a before they might do it again. Lutano eyeing down the Eldegoss. Zugrug peeling back to Sarayu. Sarayu can isolate Dazzling Gleam to power up punch. Good night, sir. Take oh. a nap. At the start of this game, I was saying that's exactly what you need to do. You need to fine-tune, close the gap, and try to get a quick execute. But how on earth do you do it when Toon is surrounded by Sing, Leaf Tornado, Power-Up Punch? Right now, there is just these iron gates stopping you from taking out your key teamfight objectives. And there's an iron wall from TTV set up. And that wall has been now set up around the perimeter of Zapdos as we have entered into that two-minute stretch. Yeah, they TTV has a huge lead, which we know is a hundred and more or more points, and uh, they intend to keep that as they're eyeing definitely down that second tier goal zone, making sure nothing too squirrely goes in there, and they're just playing defense. You can kind of see Zagrog sitting it, sitting in the bottleneck, going to be able to use Sing to kind of slow the folks down that decide to go through the middle there. Uh, Karake going to try and score in the bottom goal zone, but Goof is there to cut them off. As Zug and India are rolling together here, and they've been able to keep this jungler at bay. Yoshi doesn't want to overcommit. There's a leaf tornado right to the grill as indy says what do you think about this choke point son zugrug <laughs> finally goes in with the sing and now uh we do we have to unite move from the greninja and i think that's just to get across the map is that's a unite move by indy and now everybody's floating away indy goes back up top zugrug gets to the middle they take their unite move that's a ton of ton of damage ton of support there nobody's down yet those buddy barriers putting in work zugrug picks up a berry that's the advantage of that second tier goal zone wiggly tough dark here does go down nobody down for ttv yet there goes sarayu the lucario and that's a unite move by lutano because because they're the other one up, and there's two more players going down, and Indy's the one kicking off Zapdos. You kidding me? Zugrug jumps uh, following the, the Crackies over the board, but that's too late. Cracky's going to need a superhero play if they're going to make something work. Leaf Tornado doesn't quite close it, but they do close the door, and Indy is, and there's still four people down on Pog Champs, and that's a surrender right in your face. Zoinks, come on, man. Uh, TTV <laughs> oh, up two to nothing. Pog Chant's going to need something to square this one away. We're going to get the final score here in a second. But I want your wheels to start turning that brain of yours because Pog Champ needs to get something moving and they need to get something moving quickly. This is getting bad real quick. I sure hope they're coming up with a better solution than mine because right now I thought that was one of their best shots. Um, I, honestly, uh, it was a great defense by TTV. Obviously, we saw that. But Podchamp's actually doing a really good job of posturing in terms of how they need to when they're on the back foot there. That final fight, they had presence at top and bot and even a little bit in that mid lane. Try to spread out those defenders from TTV. Find an opening. And then we even had KR, uh, uh, Karake going for that bottom score. Great plan. We have all those points are doubled. Anything to close that gap on the points just a little bit. Uh, however, 
it was like an amorphous de- uh, defense coming out of TTV, responding in turn to everywhere, and eventually it culminated in a huge team fight right at the very end, uh, where everyone seemed to have more buddy barrier health than real health, honestly, uh, at any given time with all those Unite moves just flying off one after another. Um, really impressive play. Honestly, uh, with this team composition that they're running, I, I think that if you need what you need to do is if you're going to burn all those Unite moves, I don't see you taking a KO on Team TTV's comp. I'd rather, and I hate to say this, I truly do, I might rather see all those Unite moves be aimed towards the giant yellow bird. Uh, I, I think that sometimes there's a coin flip situation. I know the score was really close there, uh, but when Karake couldn't get that little dunk in there to try to even it up, I think at that point we should have we should have seen a flip bird situation. I don't know which side it goes. Toon still had that fairy singularity, which is an amazing group CC to try to even up for that Zapdos fight. But sometimes it's worth a shot. The, so many body barriers were flying. Of course. <laughs> that right. is very we, true. We saw Karake Goof was able to keep them from getting their points in, uh, and that was kind of the the match that lit the fire. And then all of a sudden, the scramble was was on, and the team fight broke out. Um, I mean, they still. You mentioned it before. They didn't make it to that Gardevoir. T- Tune was stayed unscathed too long, mm-hmm. and you cannot give them that much time because. Uh, quite frankly, we saw Clinic literally four minutes earlier into the game. They were able to just point and click, and uh, you know half of Pog Champs yeah. evaporated. I mean, that's just the strength of Gardevoir's late game, and having them in jungle, of course, allows them to bridge that gap between that kind of m- mediocre mid game that Gardevoir has into that incredibly powerful late game. Yeah, those buffs definitely coming in clutch too, and, and Tune being a great read on what's going to be good early. Definitely an early adopter of a lot of the changes. Uh, the player on TTV that gets allowed to play <laughs> other characters most often too um, is going to be really awesome at showing off these new character strengths that are given on any of these given balance patches. Uh, Tune really demonstrating what a good Gardevoir can look like in jungle. And let's face it, PogChamps and probably any other team in this tournament run by TTV aren't used to seeing a Gardevoir this good coming out of jungle. Uh, And a Gardevoir this good, it's going to be spiking down your damage dealers, your tanks, or your supports. It's going to be really tough to find an angle on this team. Let's see if we can make it a bit of a series in this Game 3. Yeah, Game 3 is right around the corner. Kirk Dupes next to Bay, Josh Zoinks, Hebert. Rush GG presents Sunday Rush number 9, Grand Finals, 2 in the bag. Those are the TTVs. We're going to see what Pog Champs can do to even it up. We'll be right back. Rush GG presents Sunday Rush number 9, Grand Finals. As I've mentioned, 2 for TTV, 0 for Pog Champs. They're going to try and bring a little bit of equilibrium to this best of 5 here. And they're starting with a wholesale of changes. Zoinks, bring <laughs> me through them. All right, we got the Wiggly swapped out for another main tank. We got that Mr. Mime going uh, away from that CC potential, more towards that huge spike damage potential. I like this. Right now, Champs has been losing that bot lane pretty much every time. Mime will give them a little more contestability on those early uh, early odd nodes and those first round of Bs. I'm really excited to see how this can actually play out, uh, but it will also be kind of shades of that slow bro from game one that can kind of be one factor to help shutting down Lutano and that Lucario. So excited to see that. Also, the return of the Serena and the replacing of the Venusaur with a Gardevoir mm-hmm. and a Pikachu. Lots of changes. I'm excited to see how it plays. We still kind of have that same mentality of um, of kind of that rushdown, Lucario, Serena, Mime, but we added the damage cannons of Gardevoir and Pikachu, maybe taking a little bit out of Team TTV's book. Um, so I'm excited to see how this happens. However, I think Solar or Yoshi is still going to be in the jungle. So the jungle still going to be a melee character. Let's see how it plays out. I'm, I'm not exactly sure what's going to happen here. Yeah, wholesale changes, and they're really just trying to throw anything at the wall to see what sticks here against this TTV squad that's moving very, very, uh, very pre- precisely through this map, to be quite honest. They're executing their strategy pretty much unimpeded so far. So change it up, throw something new at them, see if you can get it to work. So Zagrog coming in, we're going to have a little contestion over this Audino. Okay, yeah, and we have the Gardevoir here in bottom lane from Karake. Uh, really excited to see. I don't know, uh, a lot of players are trying out uh, many parts of this new patch. I'm wondering how experienced Karake is on this Gardevoir player. Uh, I mean, still an amazing bot lane damage player in, its own, uh, in their own right. I'm wondering how much experience they have on this 
newly minted character of Gardevoir. I mean, it, it, I don't know if you noticed there, uh, Zoinks, but Zagrog was able to get quite a few of those opposing uh, Audinos, and they're already at Sing level. And we know that's uh, that's how you tip the tip the ball over the mountain to get it start gaining some speed here uh, in these games with nine minutes on the clock. Zagrog b- bullying this core fish uh, as the team behind them scores or tries to score as a little bit goof holding down the fort. Really cool uh, tech there from Indy, by the way. We're, they're skipping that middle uh, that middle APOM, but also not destroying it until it would give you that experience to tip over to that evolution level, making sure to just earn that passive experience so that no matter what, when they take out that Creepmon, they uh, make sure that they're getting the most value out of possible of it. Indy just uh, Mark Wahlberg all over a little sniper shot here on crack. He's able to take them down right within the face of Zagrog. Now they're pressuring Dar- uh, Darkira and they take them down as this lane is starting to slide again. Karake just level three and Zagrog can't feel too awful about that matchup as they're just taking all their stuff. Now goof staying in his distance. Zagrog able to close it with sleep. They just put him down. They don't even focus on the Pokemon. Just go straight to the audio. <laughs> Taking the mobs, getting the experience in Dark here, just a little too late to the party to stop that train from leaving the station. Not very threatened from Amon at such a lower level than them on the other side of the field. So it's going to give them a lot more free reign to uh, make sure they're focusing on all of these just field Pokemon that are there and available. Uh, we have a little bit of a tussle with Lutano and Seriu up top, um, trading a lot of damage. You can see Lutano all the way down to half his health bar, forced to retreat. So um, that, not the most exciting thing to watch a lot of the time, but it is interesting to see which Lucario is getting the better out of each other. But uh, we have Darkir almost up to that level five going to be quite a strong mr mime uh for this set of bees upcoming could be a pretty big threat for team ttv uh crack is as well level six one thing i want to point out indie bear was doing a little jungle invade there and uh was getting cut off by crackies and karaki but they weren't able to take them down indie made it out unscathed and took a bunch of stuff as uh, those bees kind of pour in every which way uh, goof bullying still a little bit and Zagra going to get a little HP in the goal zone maybe grab this berry get ready for Dreadnought because it is here 657 on the clock and now mm-hmm. we're watching where this is going to start Cracky's shooting down Zagrug there with some a little bit of lightning as uh, the chips chip shots are coming in here from Indie Bear and Dreadnought resetting itself maybe waiting for a tune and Lutano to join the fray Zagrug identifying Cracky's and they might be able to close the door on them because they got that level advantage if Zagrug not giving up there comes Dark here with the save, a little confusion, a little blast. Um, and that's a unite move by Wigglytuff to pick up the squad. And Indy Bear is able to close it out in the face of the jungler here on the opposing team. And that's three KOs. Cracky's down. Uh, Karake's down. Mr. Mime Darkira is, is one of the only ones still standing, to be quite honest, as all the points roll in. And I said Toon was going to show up, and man, did they. Oh, man, what a heartbreaker. That was definitely Polychem's best chance of getting back in this game. Had a full five stack there at Dreadnought when the fight popped off, whereas TTV was still missing Lutano, who was roaming around in mid, coming down after getting a couple of those attack weight stats. Uh, but just unfortunately <laughs> unfortunately for them, amazing for Indie Bear, able to snipe as they always do with that Leaf Tornado Eldegoss. Uh, a really impressive play. Uh, let's see if Solary can actually maybe snipe out of Lucario. Very hard for Lucario to 1v1 to Serena when Serena's doing that much movement as well as self-healing. Uh, but Zugrug, on the other hand, is able to do a little bit more of a shutdown with that sleep. There we go. That's a Unite move right onto Zagrug by Yoshi. And Yoshi going to try and take advantage. Tomb there to help out. And they're asleep in the goal zone. And there it's closed out by Lutano. And Toon gets the KO on Serena. That's two for Lutano. That's one for Toon. And Zagrug was like, ah, I did my job here, right? I put him to sleep for like three seconds. And I'm just going to roll back down. As Goof is holding down the bottom lane against two by themselves here with five minutes six on the clock. Goof rolling back up top. Contestable Aldino in the irons. Yeah, Rotom set down the lane by TTV, making sure that they, uh, the only one we've seen TTV actually prioritize this entire set, by the way. Uh, but that is probably mostly uh, because that top tier one goal zone was already destroyed, making a huge value for uh, for them to be able to push that all the way down the lane. And boom, a 30 point over cap on the tier one, but as well as when the rest of their team is dunking on the tier two top. Yeah, this is... <laughs> 
I've said it. That's it's starting to slide a little bit. Uh, <laughs> it's start, the, the sand is falling through the fingers very, very quickly now as Yoshi is, is in, in a mess there as they get KO'd. And you you see Karaka, you see Crackies up there trying to help out their squad, but they're getting leashed around. And Sarayu jumps in and uh, Crackies goes down, or Karaka goes down. Excuse me. Cracky's still on the chase. Goof is now jungle invading with a three on one there. And we're watching as now it's just TTV on Dreadnought. Zugrug alone just kind of hanging out and uh, tune getting some bees getting some experience because they of course need more of that already level 13 are you kidding me and finally goof goes down but most importantly they had a big distraction for a long long time <laughs> yeah definitely and this dreadnought could be a, a pretty massive turn if Bob champs is able to find a way to secure it uh unfortunately is not going to uh that comeback experience would have been extremely influential for pog champ but that comeback experience is still available for their team. They're, this game is rough, but not completely lost. I say that as I see a Corellia still on the field. However, um, all of those tier one goal zones going away is giving them really early access to those Autonos in lane, making sure that their experience can scale really quickly and give them a bit more of a fighting chance when it comes down to these last two minutes. Only about a minute away as we hit three minutes, nine seconds on the clock. Yeah, I want to see maybe a, a very gentle contest here from Pog Champs on this Rotom, uh, but I don't want to overcommit into fights that I can't close out or I can't get away out of. Uh, Sarayu diving in. They're going to try and do work on Indy, but oh. I think they need to bail. That was the right call mm -hmm. here. Um, that is definitely the right call. As uh, Crackies is down, but they're almost off respawn. But look at Yoshi getting caught behind the back lines again. Zugra, Goof, and company close it out with all off the back of Toon here. And that Gardevoir, they send that Rotom down the lane. Uh, I mean, it's it's got a good clip to go to get to that first tier goal zone. And that's that's going to be a lot of points raining in two minutes, 35 on the clock. Zapdos on the horizon. Definitely got some range to go, but Leaf Tornado rolling out the green carpet, if you will, is going to make it go a lot faster down that lane. Uh, Rotom going to be pushing in. Maybe uh, if this can go all the way in, TTV definitely seems like they are prioritizing pushing and walking this Rotom in the lane. Uh, if it does, we see a lot of Aos energy in the pockets. Did not realize it was only had 20 points left on it. The Rotom breaks the goal zone. Yeah, and nobody down on TTV here as Goof is literally holding down that second tier goal zone by themselves in the face <laughs> of the jungler. And I think uh, Lucario, who else is down there? I can't quite yeah, see how it's stacked up. Dark Hero, dark there you go. But they're all so low HP. This is going to be too easy. That's a saying. Toon takes it out. Dark Hero getting eyed up. They have to use a Unite move just to stay alive. And they're trying to put some pressure on the Gardevoir and Toon. At least they're eyeing down the right character. Zagrog with the Dazzling Gleam and Sing trying to chase down Dark Hero. Confusion Blast there. They keep quick check on Zapdos. Nobody's there yet. Zagrog's still in the chase. Toon going to close that one out. They are loosing them along, and they've gotten Serena back in the mix. So that's not a bad showing there uh, by what they were doing by Dark Hero to just kind of buy a lot of attention. Uh, Sarayu's still kind of working in the grass, but here we go working through. Dark Hero is down. We mentioned that. Unite move by Wigglytuff, and now the fight's breaking out. Yoshi getting identified, and Yoshi getting worked on. Cracky's dives in. Lutano with the KO on them. Out of almost left field, it seemed like their focus was completely somewhere else, but here comes Yoshi doing a lot of work on Zagrog. Zagrog hanging in there in the pocket, buying a lot of time for Toon to close it out because that's who they're relying on. And Zugrug bails because they know Toon's got it. Toon, Zugrug going immediately to Sarayu. Sarayu working on Zugrug, and I think I need to take a quick breath. <laughs> yeah, Sarayu giving you that action as it takes out the Wigglytuff of Zug. Um, breaks that goal zone, definitely giving them some more points, but there is a huge mountain to climb right now. So many goal zones down on teams of PogChamp, which means they have to get a lot of points in. Right now, their focus has to be on flipping Zap, but with Sarayu on a 30 second uh, respawn counter, he is, they are not going to be involved in this fight whatsoever and now neither is their Pikachu uh, at this moment in time TTV is running up the bank and seeing how many scores they can get and Goof seeing if he can yet again survive on one hit point 15 seconds left and it's just throwing throw everything at the at the woodshed now Zagro comes in with a sing dark here and Karake just going to try and close it out in the best they can Serena moving in but I don't think they're long for this world good on them good showing by uh, Pogcham against a very formidable opponent but I think this one's going to slide in the way of TTV yeah we'll see that final score right now but yeah I can only imagine the the gap between these scores shouldn't be amazing but definitely we all knew what that uh what that end result was going to be while we were watching the final minutes of that game 348 to 190 uh really amazing uh presence of mind by ttv in those final minutes and 
Great tournament win from them, winning the grand finals of the Rush GG Sunday Rush in a 3-0 fashion. To Pog Champs, a lot of uh, a lot of moments of brilliance there. Um, unfortunately, didn't quite to, uh, quite get to capitalize on on too many of them uh, in the face of TTV and uh, their traditional squad that we've seen line up uh, week in and week out. I am looking forward to seeing more out of Pog Champs. I really enjoyed watching their unique compositions in the Delcy Trainer Challenge uh, Group One. They did qualify for that 16 team uh, double elimination tournament uh, for quite a big purse. So excited to see their performance there. But today. Today is all about TTV as they take down that 3-0 win and, and put another notch on their belt. So on yeah. behalf of Unite Mikes, Josh Zoinks, Hebert, Kirk Dubes, Snacks, Dubay, we'll catch you next time.